Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR. I mean, proprietor to Tenkar's Tavern blog. So, the earnings call for quarter two for Hasbro has come and gone. There are a number of videos that you probably should be watching out there that go into the overall call. Listen, they lost money on the D&D movie. Honor Among Thieves, they're taking a hit on that. Uh, sales are down for Magic and D&D compared to this time last year. Nothing that be unexpected. Oh, but they've got 2 million, I believe it's the number, new D&D Beyond subscribers. Mm, I don't know if those are paid subscribers. I don't think those are new accounts. But this is an interesting part to the... Uh, a question and answer section to the call. And I thought we'd go over this one little part because I think it states an awful lot for what we are interested in. D&D, right? Operator, our next question is from the line of Fred Wink Whiteman, sorry, with Wolf Research. Please proceed with your question. Fred Whiteman. Hey, guys, I just wanted to come back to Wizards. And if we think back to the Investor Day last fall, and I totally recognize a lot of this change, but it felt like D&D was a big piece of the plan to double the Wizards business. And if we just think about the film Impairment and the softer box office, does that put those targets at risk, or is there enough traction and momentum in some other areas to offset that. Chris Cox answers, no, I mean, good morning, Fred. I would say, and I underline this, because to me, it says everything. The underlying thesis of our D&D business was all about digital. To me, entertainment's a kicker. It helps to enable broader audiences' exposure to us traditionally a mid-core to hardcore gaming brand. And what digital allows us to do is kind of take that tabletop role-playing game, TAM, T-A-M, don't know what that uh, stands for. Not D&D. That we have in the world, which is probably about 80 million people who participate in those hobbies and frequent that kind of channel and take our brand like D&D to 800 million people who play role-playing games. We're not saying 800 million people who play role-playing games. They're not talking tabletop RPGs. They are talking MMOs They are talking computer RPGs. They are not talking tabletop. So when I say taking a brand like D&D to 800 million people who play role-playing games, they're talking about we are going to use digital games like Baldur's Gate where you can fuck a bear uh, because actually I don't know if certain countries will allow that scene to be included. But in any case, um, that is their plan. And and so I think Baldur's Gate 3 is just the first of several new digital initiatives you're going to see from us that span how we try to transform tabletop role-playing gaming to an even richer theater, kind of theater of the mind experience. Now, uh, that would certainly sound like that uh, game that has oh, that AI for tabletop that Hasbro is working with, right? I forget the name offhand, but it's going to allow for sounds and uh, pretty much handle everything but moving your pieces. Hmm. Two more traditional video games from us and partners like Larian. So, and they say that they believe that Baldur's Gate 3 
is going to make Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro more money than E1 made probably in the last half decade, profit-wise. That's their expectations. So, Baldur's Gate 3, they're not just getting a one-off payment. They're getting residuals. They are getting paid per sale or whatever it is. That's going to be a huge... That's what they're getting and keeping the D&D brand profitable during this down year in between editions. Interesting, right? I certainly find it that way. So, for those conspiracy theorists amongst us who are like, oh my God, they want to just go digital. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The underlying thesis of our business, D&D business was all about digital. That means to me, entertainment's a kicker. It means that tabletop is a kicker. Now, why is it that digital is so important? Digital has less overhead, doesn't have stock, <clears throat> and more importantly, it can have microtransactions and subscriptions. That's the future. Chris Cox comes from Microsoft. He understands the power of subscriptions. You know, and that becomes evergreen. Tabletop RPGs, you buy the rule book, what more do you need? If you have the ability to create adventures, you need nothing. And maybe you only need one rule book for the whole gaming group. A lot of times that's how it was back in the day. Um, no, they need to monetize. They need to monetize the entire player base. And they need to get the most money out of you all that they can. Especially when they are suffering a quarter like a few others. Loss of general net loss in revenue, general net loss in profits. And it's not all D&D &D honor, honor amongst thieves. It's not all the movie, folks. It's not all the movie. The business is changing. They're trying to get ahead of that change. And they're doing so by... The underlying thesis of our D and D business was all about digital, is all about digital, will be all about digital. Folks, let me know what you think. I'd like your feedback. If you can subscribe, so much the better. Thumbs up, comments, all work well too. So, as always, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice. Roll them well. I will be back again tomorrow. Oh my God! It's another live stream. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, 8 p.m. on this very channel. Other than that, God bless, folks. I'll catch you later.